All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about five knives, five folders specifically, that I think would be a good fit for survival situations. Now, I want to preface this video because I know that people are already writing in the comment section below that, you know, folders or pre-broken knives are not good for survival situations. And largely, I would agree with this. However, I do want to concede the point that, um, or I do want to note the point that I think folders mixed with a really good fixed blade can absolutely make a huge difference. And moreover, not only do I believe this, I also think that I've I have literally embodied this on my channel for quite some time, and I know definitely within my own EDC and wilderness EDC setups, I have embodied this folder slash fixed blade kind of tandem joint operation or cooperation with my knives as a whole. So today I wanted to go over five knives that I think are really solid options for wilderness folders and a kind of extra one thrown in there. All right, so let's go over these folders. There's no real particular order here or budget per se um, because a lot of these are more or less expensive depending on what variations you choose. But first off, we're going to choose or we're going to go with the first one and that is the Benchmade Griptilian. Now, to be honest, the partially serrated, it probably wouldn't be my first choice, but the Benchmade 550, the full-sized Griptilian, especially in something like S30V or CPM uh, 20CV would be an absolute winner. For me, I think that this is a knife that is genuinely quite tough if you did need to press it into a serious situation and actually baton it. Uh, I have videos in the past on my channel documenting and showing that I can definitely baton this thing, beat the heck out of this knife, and it actually still works very effectively. Now, that being said, the objective of a folder isn't necessarily going into the use case with abuse in mind. However, I will say something like this Benchmade Griptilian full-size Griptilian would be a really good offering, um, especially for given its overall size and its uh, you know usability. Now, to be fair, another one that I have used a lot too is the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. So the 556, the 555, um, and the 557. So all of those are your Mini Grip family, and I have legitimately used those in survival kits and survival training. They are also a very valid option for this as well. So the Griptilian family, but I would lean more towards the full-size Griptilian just for its sheer functionality at the end of the day. So the next one up, and I believe I've shown this one in other videos similarly minded to this one, but that is the uh, 8020.5 by Demco Knives. Now the 20 or the 8020 um, would also be another good one for this, but I think the 8020.5, that is the smaller variant of the 80 family, and this one I think is probably just as good, if not better than the full size, just because it offers a little bit better carryability. And so once again, you, there's always this fine line. If a folder isn't exactly your you know, go-to knife, it's not gonna be the thing that you use for every single you know, use case out in the wilderness, then go with a smaller option that's more portable and more manageable. And once again, more complementary to the size of fixed blade you're gonna be using makes a lot of sense to me. So the 8020.5 is the one that makes makes the most sense to me. And once again, with the shark lock, it is going to be a very tough knife if you need to press it into a tougher roll or more hard use roll, and then you're still getting a very functional blade shape. You can also get the sheep's foot or what they call shark's foot blade uh, shape with this one, but I think the clip point makes the most legitimate sense in this use case. All right, moving over to the Ontario Knife Company, or OKC, the Model 1, or the Model 2 for that matter, do make a good amount of sense. Once again, maybe the Model 2, unless you're running a larger fixed blade, because this Model 1 is almost just as large as my Bark River Knives Bravo 1, but that is also kind of what I like about this knife. Once again, this is also a good knife that I wouldn't recommend pressing into as many hard case or hard use scenarios, but this this blade, the uh, blade tang, still very sharp. You can easily strike ferro rods with the back of this. You can easily feather stick with this knife, and that is going to save use and abuse or wear and tear on your main blade that you can put on a folder. So that's one thing that I will say to this. Once again, probably.
probably wouldn't baton with this. I would feel comfortable batoning with the 20.5 and the grip or griptilian family of knives. Probably wouldn't recommend batoning with the rat one. It can survive, but it will probably not take too much abuse. So keep that in mind with the rat one, but um, or rat model one, I should say, but it is a valid option and I think especially for the size weight and features of this knife especially something like the red rat like this guy um, where you have the s35 vn it's really hard to argue with just how well it works all right moving into the next two we are going to have the spider co manix 2 and the manix 2 probably not in this exact configuration cpm s 110 v it's probably not the best outdoor steel but if you get this in something like cts 204 p if you get this in 20 cv if you get this in uh, cpm s 35 s 45 vn if you get this in one of those types of steels that's still a high-end performer um, you're going to see a lot of good performance with it and once again that ball bearing lock is going to give you a lot of strength this is yet again another knife that within reason i would feel comfortable batoning once again you're not going to necessarily do the most hardcore tasks that you would have a fixed blade but this is going to offer you a lot of performance once again easily going to strike ferro rods it's going to feather stick it's going to do a lot of your fine more delicate tasks and the cool thing is if you get it in one of the more stainless steels this is also going to be a really good food prep knife so whatever you need to prep um, you know food wise as far as outdoors go it's going to be a solid offering now lastly and rounding it out we have the Spyderco paramilitary 2 now I would say Another venerable contender to this would also be the Spyderco Military 2, I believe it is. The Military, yeah, the Military 2. And that is because they recently made the Military 2 a compression lock knife. And I can tell you from personal experience from my very first Paramilitary 2, these are knives that you can absolutely baton with. Now, once again, I would stress some degree of caution because, unfortunately, this has a very, very... Um, thin, narrow, and precise tip. So, you know, doing too much lateral stress will probably still break this knife. But if you are truly batoning and you're putting downward force on it, you absolutely can baton with the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 with its compression lock. And so I would imagine, conversely, that translates over to the same strength for the Spyderco Military 2. And so whether it's the Paramilitary or the Military 2, um, I would say that either of those are gonna be a really venerable contender for being a solid outdoor knife because, or survival knife, because you can press them into harder tasks or you know more industrious tasks and it's still going to have a lot of good performance. However, once again, for the actual core of folder performance, that really precise, really um, acute tip is going to be able to do a Lot of precision work so for me when i look at a folder i'm like can i start a fire with it and can i feather stick with it if you can do those things that are a little bit more industrious then i would prefer to have that specific knife um you know some degree of batoning thrown in there um would be nice once again the rat one probably can't do that but all four of the others can absolutely do that so that's what i would say now last up as i mentioned a bonus to this and debatable whether you consider this really a folding knife i technically don't but having something like a good sturdy pair of multi-tool pliers something like leatherman surge leatherman wave leatherman charge um, these are all going to be really venerable options and tools and like i said technically still you know retain that full folding knife capability, so you still have a folding knife. Um, you technically have two with your fully serrated and your plain edge there, but um, this is maybe, you know, stretching a little bit on the folder knife, folding knife kind of thing. But once again, if you're looking for something that can bridge the gap between lessening use on your fixed blade and still being a valid option, something like the Leatherman Surge is a really good choice. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.